Let's now jump into understanding meiosis in some depth. So let's start with a germ cell. As we mentioned already, a germ cell is a cell that it can either go through mitosis to produce other germ cells, or it can undergo meiosis in order to produce gametes. So this is a germ cell right over here. Let me draw the nuclear membrane. So that's the nuclear. Let me draw the nucleus a little bit larger, just because that's where, where we care a lot about the chromosomes in it. And let me draw a centrosome, which will play a role later on. I want to do that in, let's see, I'll do that in this blue color. Each centrosome has two centrioles in it, but we'll, we'll, well, I just want to clarify some of the terminology. And in the mitosis videos, I focused on a, an, uh, cells of an organism, I just kind of made it up, that had two chromosomes, that had a diploid number of two, that had one homologous pair, that had one chromosome from each of its parents. For this video, I'm going to focus on a species, not human beings, that would have 23 pairs or 46 chromosomes. I'm going to focus on a species that has that's diploid number is four. And so let's say it has two chromosomes from the father. And let me do that. I'll do that in this orange color. And I'll do it in the chromatin, or I'll, I'll kind of depict the chromatin state. It's kind of unwound. So maybe it has a long one from the father, and it has a short one from the father. And then it has homologous chromosomes from the mother. So it would have the long one from the mother, and it would have the short one. The short one from the mother, just like that. And obviously, this is a, a, a huge uh, simplification, but hopefully, this, this gets the point across. So, here it has a diploid number of chromosomes. So, this is, let me write this down. This is diploid, diploid, diploid number is equal to, we have four chromosomes. And then this thing, this germ cell, let me write this down. This is a germ cell right over here. It will go through interphase. So let me draw that. So it will go through interphase in which, in which it grows and it can replicate its DNA and its centrosome. And so let me draw that. So after it goes through interphase, I want to use my space carefully because I have a lot of steps to go through. After it goes through interphase, I am going to have in my nucleus, in my nucleus here, my DNA will have replicated. So this long, this long chromosome from my father, it will now all of the DNA will have replicated. So it might look something, well, something like that, and it's attached at a, it's attached at a centromere. All these centro words at a centromere right here. But I'm still trying to draw it in kind of the chromatin state. It's actually all spread out. It's not bunched up so you can see it very clearly as these X's in kind of a, in a, in a, in a, in a simple microscope. So it's just replicated. And after replicating, it is still one chromosome. It has twice the genetic material, but it is still one chromosome. That one chromosome is now made up of Two sister chromatids. Two sister chromatids. We talk a lot about that in the mitosis video, but it doesn't hurt to reinforce because it can get a little bit confusing. And then you have that shorter, that shorter chromosome from the father, and then that also replicates into two sister chromatids attached at a centromere. So these are still two chromosomes from the father. It has twice the amount of DNA, but it's containing the same information, just duplicate versions of that same information. And the same thing's going to happen from the, from the mother. You had that long chromosome from the mother, homologous to this one right over here. It's going to replicate. So it's now going to be two, it's now going to be two sister chromatids. And then you have a short strand from the mother that was homologous to this one from your father. And that's also going to replicate. And so it's like that. And at the end of interphase, it would actually all be, it would all be spread out. Once again, it won't be bunched up into these clearly discernible X's. I drew them a little bit that way, otherwise, because you, know, you would have trouble seeing how it replicated. And we also have, we also have replicated our centrosome as we've gone through interphase. Now we are ready. In fact, now we are ready for either mitosis or meiosis. But as I said, the focus of this video is going to be meiosis. So let's let's do some meiosis. So the first phase, so the first several phases we call meiosis 1 and the beginning of meiosis 1 is prophase 1. So let's see what happens in prophase 1. So prophase 1 so let me draw 
the cell right over here. So prophase, prophase one, a couple of things happen. The nuclear membrane begins to dissolve. This is very similar to prophase, to prophase when we were looking at, at mitosis. So the nuclear envelope begins to dissolve. These things start to maybe migrate a little bit. So these characters are starting to go at ends, at different ends. And the DNA starts to bunch up into kind of its condensed form. So now I can draw it. So now I can start to draw it as proper. So this is, this is the one from the father right over here. And this is the one from the mother. And I'm drawing them overlapping on purpose because something very interesting happens, especially in meiosis. So this is the mother right over here. This is, let me see, let's, I'll do the centromere in blue now. That's a cent centromere. That's a centromere. Now this is the shorter ones from the father. This is, these are the shorter ones from the mother. And actually, let me just do, draw them on opposite sides, just to show that they don't have to, the ones from the father aren't always on the left-hand side. So this is the shorter one from the father. They could be all on the left-hand side, but it doesn't necessarily have to be. And then this is the shorter one from the mother. And I won't draw these overlapping, although they could have. Shorter one from the mother. And once again, each of these, this is a homologous pair. That's a homologous pair over there. Now, the DNA has been replicated. So in each, each of the chromosomes in a homologous pair, you have two sister chromatids. And so in this entire homologous pair, you have four chromatids. And so this is sometimes called a tetrad. So let me just get us, give ourselves some terminology. So this right over here is called a tetrad, or often, often called a tetrad. Now the reason why I drew this overlapping is when we are in prophase one, in meiosis one, let me label this, this is pro, prophase one, you can get some genetic recombination, some homologous recombination. Once again, this is a homolo homologous pair, one chromosome from the father that I've gotten from the father, or the species or the, the cell got from its father cell, and one from the mother. And they're homologous in that they might contain different base pairs, different actual uh, DNA, but they code for the same for the same genes. So you know, oversimplification, but in the in a similar place on each of these, they might code for eye color or I don't know personality. And you know, nothing is that simple in in or how tall you get, and it's not that simple in DNA. But just to give you just to give you an idea of how it is, and the reason why I overlapped them like this is to show how the recombination can occur. So actually, let me zoom in. So this is the one from the father. Once again, it's in all in the condensed form. This is one chromosome made up of two sister chromatids right over here. And I drew the centromere, not to be confused with centrosomes. That's where they are. those two sister chromatids are attached. And then I will draw, draw the homologous chromosome from the mother. So the homologous chromosome from the mother, just like just like that, homologous chromosome from the mother. And the recombination can occur at a point right over here. So after you're done the recombination, this side might look something more like this. So let me let me draw it. Let me draw it like this. So they essentially break up and they swap those little sections is one way to think about it. So this one will now have a little a little piece a little piece from the mother and it might code for similar genes but now it contains the mother's genetic information and then and then this one over here this one over here will now have the piece and you could say even the homologous piece from the father from the father let me do this to to centromeres. And this is really interesting. This isn't, you know, all the time there there could be recombination and oftentimes it can lead to kind of non-optimal things, nonsense code and DNA and might lead to a, a non-functional organism. But this happens uh, fairly common in meiosis. And it's a way, once again, to get more variation. We've talked about sexual reproduction before and sexual reproduction introduces variation into a population. And this, obviously, when different sperms find different 
eggs, that introduces variation. But then even amongst homologous pairs, you can actually have exchange of exchange between these chromosomes. And that's interesting because as we mentioned, each of these chromosomes, they code for a bunch of different genes. And a gene is kind of will code for a specific or a set of uh, uh, proteins. And so this right over here, let's say, and this is I'm gonna, what I'm about to say is going to be a huge oversimplification. Maybe right over here, you coded for eye color, or it was related to, or it helped code for eye color, and that you got that from your dad. And here, it helped code for eye color, and you got that from your mom. Your mom might have uh, trended you towards a, a lighter eye color, and your dad might have trended you towards a darker eye color. But now, the one from your mom is on this chromosome, this gene. And then the one, or they, they're both the same gene, they're just different alleles. They're coding for different variants of that gene. And then the allele from your dad is over here. And once again, you know, some people get confused with genes and chromosomes and all of this. Each of this, these chromosomes contain a bunch of genes. These are very long DNA molecules. These code for a bunch of different genes. So a gene will be, will be a little section of here that could code for a particular protein. So that's what happens in prophase one. In prophase one, you have this condensation of, of your chromosomes, of your homologous pairs. You, have, you, have, you can have this recombination. And it's really interesting. This recombination doesn't tend to happen at just random points that would kind of break the genetic, genetic, <laughs> the genetic information. It tends to happen at fairly clean points. And the places where this breakup is happening these are called, the plural, if you just talk about one point, it's chiasma. Or if you're talking about the plural, it's chiasmata. Sounds like it could be a horror movie. So chiasma. Chiasma. And the fact that they happen, they tend to happen fairly cleanly, this is, you know, once again, kind of the beauty of, of, of the universe, or at least of, of biology, is that through uh, billions of years of, of evolution, these things have, have kind of optimized for more variation and to happen in fairly clean ways. So I'm going to leave this video right there. I know I just got to prophase one, but this was a really, really important idea of this homologous recombination or this chromosomal crossover that we see right over here. And then from there, we can continue through the rest of meiosis one and then meiosis two.